What's up YouTube? John, JDS Outdoors. Welcome back to my channel. And I figured I'd do a short little video on my air dryer system. Um, I built this system a year ago and I've got plenty of use out of it. And I've also gotten quite a few questions so I figured I would take this time to address those questions and what I would do differently and what I would keep the same if I were to build this again. I will leave a link in the description for the original build on this and also leave a link to all the parts that I used down below so feel free to check those out if you wish so let's turn the camera around show you the system and i will explain it to you so this is my sanborn 60 gallon air compressor here is all of the specs on it 60 gallon 155 psi 11.5 cfm and it's a 230 volt so i needed to uh install a special plug for it and here is my drying system it's got tall loops go almost all the way up to the ceiling to uh, help cool down the air and distribute it properly and the way it goes is we have a filter dicescent filter dicescent and then it comes down to another set of filters one is a, a particulate filter for water and another one is for oil so it pulls any contaminants out of the system and then it goes to my regulator and off to the shop now the reason i needed this is for my cnc table I ignore the mess because i kind of have a a big project going on i'm building a custom jet boat powered by an ls53 the berkeley pump feel free to check that out if you want but this this needs super dry air Otherwise, you burn through consumables quite fast on the hypertherm, and that can get quite expensive. And also, I like to do some painting every once in a while, so I need dry air. Now, a lot of people like to run those plug-in deal, refrigerating cool air things, but I wanted something that was almost maintenance-free, something I didn't have to plug in and worry about the coolant going out or whatever, and it stopped working mid-use. Now the only consumable part of this, you got to run these dicescent beads in it. Now I got two traps, one right there and one right there that hold the dicescent beads. What those are is if you've ever gotten a pack of beef jerky and you see down the bottom there's that one little pack that says don't eat, that's essentially what it is. So that's my only consumable factor in this. Now in the summertime I get about two weeks or so out of uh, each one of those. In the winter time I've been getting about four to five weeks because in the winter time there's less humidity. But they're very easy to change out and you can go ahead and reuse them. You can put them in the oven, bake them, and it'll dry them up. So the way to tell if they are bad, if you look inside this one, inside the sight glass, you see how they're nice and blue? That right there is telling you they are good. We'll go over to the first one and you can see how they're nice and pink. That right there is telling you that this has pulled some moisture out of the system. So it's working quite well. However, I made one more upgrade to this system since I went ahead and built this. Now what I did is on the air compressor itself. So previously, the air out of the motor and down into the tank. So. That's how they come factory with that little, that little guy. When I had that installed, I noticed that I would get down here in the drain at the bottom of the tank, I would get approximately uh, two ounces, two to four ounces of water per day out of this system. But now after installing this, which is I took a piece of copper, I ran it out of the motor and it goes through a transmission cooler. Now, when it's running, there's a, there's a belt and a fan back here, so it pulls the air through. When you compress air, it superheats it. So when, it's, this com when this compressor is running, you can't touch this pipe. Your hand, it'll, it'll burn your hand. It is so hot. But by the time it runs through the system and that cool air rushes it over, it cools it down, it comes out of the lower pipe, through an auto drop moisture trap. So this automatically collects condensation and it spits it out the bottom 
on its own. Auto drop. And then it goes into the tank. Now why this is important is it's cooling the air to air temperature before it ever reaches the tank. When you run the stock system without cooling the air, that hot air is rushing into an air temp tank which then creates condensation. So two to four ounces of water a day, now I'm getting two to four ounces every couple weeks. It is an amazing little trick there. Now I have a link in the description for the cooler and the auto drop along with all of these that I use for this system. So feel free to check those out and just take these parts over to your local hardware store and get the appropriate copper that you need for your specific setup. Now what would I change on it? Well, to be honest, the super tall loops that I have going on over there, they're not really necessary. Um, that was built prior to cooling the air before it reaches the tank. So if I were to build this system again, I would just do like one foot tall sections of copper so it doesn't take up so much real estate on the wall. But it still does help to keep the compressed air at ambient air temperature before it reaches the rest of my system. So it doesn't pay for me to change it now, but if I were to build it again, that's one thing I would switch. So my total investment into this relatively maintenance-free air drying system, and yes, I have done painting with an air sprayer, and I had zero moisture in the system. Prior to doing this, I had lots of moisture coming out at the ends of, uh, of my air tools and such. Total investment is, is right around 300 bucks. Um, that transmission cooler was like 50. This was like 50 and miscellaneous copper and fittings and all of those was additional 200 bucks. So $300 into dry air and I have noticed a difference in my consumables compared to your cheapest like Harbor Freight air dryer. Um, that's, you gotta plug in. Those run you, you know what, five, six, 700 bucks depending on what you can find them. Uh, you go to Northern Tool, spend 1500 to 2000 on them. I don't know. I just didn't feel it was necessary. So overall, very happy. I would build it again and do the swap on the tank. It's worked great. So if you're looking for cheap, relatively maintenance free, dry compressed air, highly recommend this. So as always, thank you for watching JDS Outdoors. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I like to read and reply to as many comments as possible. So thanks again, have a good day.